my name is Gérard Basset. Um, I won the best sommelier in the world 2010. Uh, I've been in the uh, sommelier world for a long time. I love it. I'm passionate about sommelier competition. I'm passionate about the wine world, going around the vineyard in different parts of the world. And um, I think privilege to be able to travel, to test wine. We are always very well received when we go to vineyards. Uh, I made a lot of people and, um, you know, I have to say I'm very lucky. an icon. <laughs> he's a legend, you know. Um, he's the most titled sommeliers uh, all over the world and he's so humble, so modest, you know. He never, he never said anything about this. You have to discover that. Gérard, for me, uh, it was the, maybe the more iconic sommelier we have. He was the, the global standard that everyone wished to uh, aspire to and he had this, what one would term, sort of a perfectionist attitude towards things. He would uh, insist on everything being absolutely perfect. He had the crown from Best Sommelier of UK, Best Sommelier, uh, International Sommelier in French wines, the Best Sommelier of Europe, Best Sommelier of the World, um, uh, Master of Wine. Uh, Master Sommelier from the Court of Master Sommelier. We all knew he had all this big collection of titles and yet every time I spoke with him it was super easy going and it was as if we had met ages ago. He was a very very talented and gifted person not only on a professional way but also on the human base. Perhaps it was more important for him to give himself to the other basically uh, as we say in French le, le don de soi and uh, that was probably one of his most et c'était un, une personnalité extrêmement attachante euh, qui, 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 qui aimait partager, qui, aimait, euh, qui, qui, qui était discret tout en occupant finalement l'espace. It was really for me the, the pictures what we what we waiting from the sommelier. I mean, to be to have a lot of knowledge, but to be something normal, you know, simple. He was witty and, and smart and he had a very uh, fine blend of French slash British sense of humor and um, it was always a pleasure to be, to be around him. Having uh, this year, like every year, there's always a, a, an improvement because uh, people who left the competition the, the, the last time think of uh, how can I improve. So I think the level is always a little bit higher. Okay. I shouldn't say that because I was in 10. So of course 10 was the best year and now it's going down. Good sommelier, many things. But the first thing is you must love people. The sommelier is to give pleasure, it's not there to impose. You know, the sommelier who thinks uh, product first make a mistake, in my opinion. Every customer is different. You have customers who are very um, conservative, you have customers who are very adventurous, you have customers who are very scared about wine, and a sommelier need to understand that, and he need to adapt to all these type of people. So if a customer knows a lot about wine, is a collector, then he will talk one way. If somebody is very scared about wine because they don't know, like me, I don't know much about computers, so you know, if I buy a new computer, I think, oh, <laughs> am I going to be able to to get the best out of it. I want people who, who help me. So I think a sommelier must understand all that, not be patronizing, not there to, to it, you need to talk at the same level. This combination of being knowledgeable but not uh, being too worried about showing that you are knowledgeable. <laughs> this thing of, I will help you, but only if you want me to. I think Gerard was the best example of this, and he made it in such a brilliant way. He had respect for everybody, and that came across when he was talking to customers, but also 
to his peers, people like myself, people to, uh, he brought over. He treated us all as a gentleman. I don't know anybody who can say something negative about Gerard because he was such a sweet guy, you know. Very special. It's funny because when he started, he didn't know he would become a sommelier one day. Uh, he just came to England and um, he, of course, he has no job. He was very, very young at that time. It was around 20, I think. And um, he started to work in a, in a restaurant, uh, washing the dishes, you know, because he wanted to earn money. And um, in the restaurant, the, the guy from the restaurant, when they told him, well, you're French, so you should know about wines. Maybe you can help us with the, with the restaurant, with the floor, uh, and uh, serving wines to our uh, customers. And Gérard said, well, you know, he, he was not very familiar with wines. The reason it was circumstances. It wasn't, you know, because I was working in England, um, People thought I knew a lot because I was French. Uh, I didn't really know much about it, so I wanted to learn more. Then I remember a young lady, uh, an English lady, was uh, doing a, a, a school for catering. She asked me a question about wine, and I couldn't uh, answer the question. So I went to buy a book, and I got really interested. And so all these things, you know, the fact I was French in England, the fact I was serving wine but didn't know much, and I thought, no, I need to know more. And then slowly and slowly I said, well, look, you know, I like to be specializing in wine. Competition of sommelier started in England, and my boss said, oh, you should do it. So I said, no. <laughs> he said, and he pushed me to do it. So I said, okay, I'm going to do it. And, you know, I did quite well. I reached the final. I mean, to be fair, the level wasn't very high, so it wasn't too difficult. But that gave me, I said, oh my God, I'm in a final. Even though I didn't win it, I started to think, oh, I really like that. I like, you know, learning more. I like the fact it was a competition because I like competition competition about sport, about anything. So, oh, ah, yeah, I like. So I said, I'm going to redo it. And then, you know, I started to do more competition. So it's when I thought, well, maybe I could do the World Championship. Because, you know, why not? <laughs> the first time I met Gerard was in competition, for sure. Because this was the link between both of us. Because um, he was competing, I was competing. He was training for the sommeliers um, competition. He was training for the Masters of Wine. I was training for the Masters of Wine and for the sommeliers competitions. I worked with him. Um, well, I was he's his um, manager, if you like, for three world championships. He decided he was going to win the world championship. It was difficult because, you know, uh, I remember there were some people who were favourite, who had done competition before, where they, uh, uh, I wasn't, uh, of course, a favourite. And I remember uh, it was all new for me, you know, the level was very high. And then the competition took place um, I, I, uh, and I didn't qualify for a final, I watched the final. But that didn't discourage me. I thought, OK, I know now what is required. I'm going to work for it and I will come back. And uh, I saw his progression and Gerard has something fantastic. When he decides something, he goes really to his goal and he won't step down. Never. I, I was three times second, uh, twice second and one second equal. I wasn't the only one to be second. but. Uh, of course, it's very disappointing, although sometimes, the first time I was second, I didn't expect to be second, so I was quite pleased, because I was expecting to be uh, nowhere, so I was quite pleased. Of course, the second time, uh, I would have liked to be more, and the third time, I was upset. I thought, you know, second again, you know, I, I didn't like that, because I felt, so I thought, no, I will do it again. And this time I won't, um, 
So I tried to do all sorts of things that I, I didn't do before. I took um, two coaches and I went to do all sorts of different uh, I uh, work very much on the mantle, not just the, the work of somebody, I work on uh, try to be strong mentally to, in order that when I came to the competition, I felt that, um, you know, I was going to, to beat everyone. <laughs> I had the chance to share four World Championships uh, with Gerard as a competitor. And um, one of the most uh, <laughs> interesting moments was in 2010 uh, in, uh, in Chile, uh, in the morning of the final, uh, we decided to work a little bit around uh, in order to distress for the final, if we had the chance to, to go in the final. And uh, I remember that uh, I thought to myself, um, um, I would like to win, but I accept to be second for the third time only if it's Gerard that won the title. That was the case. And, uh, well, uh, of course, uh, I was sad for me, but I, would, I was happy for Gerard, and I think uh, that Gerard deserved this title of best of of the world. I was impressed. I had seen him compete in, in Greece a few years before. And he was already incredibly good, but then in Chile he just stole the show completely. No member of the jury had a doubt that he was taking that contest with him. When he finally won in 2010, and he came on the other side, on the side of the technical committee, the people organizing these competitions, it was bringing to ASI even more. Uh, because uh, he brought, of course, his knowledge, he brought, of course, his sense of organization, he was uh, very um, methodic. He was always taking care of the candidates competing. I will give you one example, it's like sometimes uh, in the final of a world competition we do a quiz and we show images of people and they have to name the names of the people in the images or things like this. And they would always go, you know, make sure you put one that is doable, one that, you know, it's a phase that the candidate would recognize because we need them to feel okay and to know that he can get some and to do a good uh, performance on stage. Uh, he was always uh, worrying about how all the tests should be fair and trying to minimize the hassle. You know, when you have 60 people competing, sometimes it's a little ted tedious because you have to wait your turn. And I was always worrying about how the candidates were doing. It is a very strange situation sitting in the technical committee preparing this competition without him. On the other side, his spirit is there. And um, I think this competition, um, at least I think from the point of the technical committee, is really dedicated to him because we want to make it as perfect as he would have been satisfied with. So if he looks down from heaven, perhaps he says, okay, boys and girls, well done. So hopefully it works like this. Not only was he, he became a master sommelier and became a master of wine, but he understood that, um, that you get to a particular uh, level of qualification and you don't stop learning, you, you continue. That was part of, uh, of the job role of a sommelier, not just to work in the restaurant, but to improve themselves. Uh, and he was very, very, very much uh, uh, an ambassador for that. He was uh, obsessed by to know everything about uh, about uh, everything. He was always looking forward uh, to learn from everybody around him. So he was always looking at you in the eye and um, 
listening to you, not just uh, teaching, but listening to you before he said anything. I'm passionate about things. These things I'm passionate. I remember when I started to be passionate about catering, I'll give you a small example. I would love uh, learning about uh, napping, napkin folding, you know, napkin, different shape of napkin. Ah, yes. Long time ago, long time ago. And I'd bought a book and I wanted to, to be the best at that. And one day I woke and I saw in a shop a shape I never seen. And I looked at this thing, I said, I don't know how to do it. And I went in the shop and I say, in your window, <laughs> you got this uh, napkin. Can you explain to me how you did it? And they thought I was crazy. But for me, it's all about, you know, you don't, I, I wanted to know. So I, I went in the shop, didn't buy anything. I asked somebody who didn't know, so he had to call the manager. And eventually, after half an hour, somebody came and showed me, we undo the napkins and, and I could learn. He used to love to have some challenge in life. And when he could achieve some goal, it was not enough. He was always looking for something else to do and to achieve. It you know? doesn't matter what you do. I think if you have a dream, you have to. Uh, people used to say, "Oh, stop it! Uh, you know, you won't win it." But I was determined to do it. My wife said, "One day you'll carry on doing it in a wheelchair." But I said, "It doesn't matter. I'll carry on. I wanted to win it." And, and it, you know, whatever you do, a master of wine exam is a challenge. What is interesting is the journey. You know, the preparation, the strategy. I think everything is in a preparation, and that's very uh, exciting. You don't need to know a lot to enjoy wine. It's like music. I can't play music, but I can enjoy music. So if you don't know about wine, you can enjoy wine. Uh, a sommelier should know about wine, of course, because if you know about wine, you, you know how the wine is made, you know, you understand the different grape variety, you understand the different regions, then it gives you confidence to talk to the customer. Of course, that's important. But uh, for the customer, you don't need to know about wine. <laughs> it's a product, so you can uh, explain. It's like music. I, I don't know how the symphony is created. I don't know how the people play all these different instruments. I don't know how this band can play, uh, you know, but I like the music. That's the Rolling Stone. The Rolling Stone in 88 is the Rolling Stone, and I love the Rolling Stone. I think that's, you know, you can imagine Give Me Shelter, with type of music. This one, I think it's probably more something like Ravel. <laughs> <laughs> it's an emotion. An emotion is not about level of knowledge. It's an emotion. And music is emotion, wine is emotion. Is it, and it's not just about the wine. It's where you drink it, who you drink it, the circumstance, the occasion. It's a lot to do with... Uh, wine is fabulous product but it's a lot to do with everything around it. Sometimes I want something very fruity, I want something very fresh and lively, and sometimes I just want, you know... When I'm at home <laughs> with my wife, I've got a lot of bottles in my cellar, I, you know, I, I go and, you know, for dinner, I choose, I want to have something to bring me. So, but it's a bit like, again, going back to the music, like the mood. Sometimes you have, for uh, maybe two or three weeks, we have a type of music you really into it, you know? And it's the same with wine. You have a certain style of wine, you really into it. And then another period, you prefer different style of wine. So you, you cannot, you know, and it's what makes it exciting. So uh, you'd be in your Italian period, <laughs> you like the Barolo, you like the Tuscan wine, you like, you know, whatever wine. And then sometimes you'll be in a different period or you come back. See, if you travel a lot, when you come back from a region, you get very uh, influenced, so for a few weeks you want to drink more of the wine. It's what makes it exciting. He was really a wine lover because when you have a son and you name him Romane, it's really something. And then uh, his son was called Romane, but he had also dogs, you know, and his dog was... <laughs> <laughs> the, the, the last dog, I think it was Margot or something like that. So it was always names of wines, you know. So he was surrounded by wines all the time. Gérard was a 
the guy is, uh, uh, he was so serious, but it, it was easy to, to, to spend a nice moment, to laugh, to, to share a bottle of wine, and uh, it was your yeah. It was good company for a start. I had a good sense of humor, although it wasn't always apparent. Um, I was very fortunate. I, I count myself privileged to have been able to call him a friend. And uh, I think the world is a, a worse place off that he's not with us. He'll be long remembered, greatly respected, and sadly missed. I think that if, if people want to make him the role model for their career, they could do no better than to, to, to look at what Jared has left behind and, uh, and follow his path. Et dans sa disparition, qui nous rend bien entendu extrêmement tristes, euh, tout en étant très heureux de l'avoir connu, euh, a vraiment marqué les esprits des gens et, et c'est à la hauteur justement de ce que, ce que Gérard pouvait représenter pour nous. À la fois un grand professionnel, mais surtout un, un, un grand homme, amoureux de la vie, amoureux de l'amitié, amoureux de, de Nina et de, de, de leur fils Romané. Et, et c'est voilà, une équipe fantastique, une famille euh, rare et, et, et quelqu'un qui aura vraiment marqué notre vie auquel on pensera tout le temps. He left his passion and motivation and his desire to be better all the time, you know. And he wanted to improve every time. He really contributed a lot to the world of sommeliers. Um, I think he left for all of us this message that when you are passionate about something, you can achieve it. When you are determined, you'll go to the end of the world. It's like when you are in love, you will go to the end of the world. <laughs> Thank you, Philippe. <laughs> <laughs>